Will you please rise in either body or spirit and join me in the call to worship? How shall we live when shadows gather? Drawn to God's unquenchable light, we are all so drawn into one another's presence. What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light as God is in the light, we are one with each other. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Opening hymn is number 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voices. morning. You all may be seated. <clears throat> It'll always be something, but at least the computer worked last week. That's all I have to say. Um, we're just having a, it's obviously working, but we're having a glitch with the software. So I want to lift up some ministry invitations and celebrations. As uh, Betty announced a few uh, when we got started, we did have a wonderful Easter celebration. So thank you all who joined us for um, that it was just an amazing morning from 6.30 on. So uh, our musicians did a wonderful job. Miss Ella did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, we have some events coming up. Uh, our regular weekly stuff continues on. Um, uh, the 4th and 18th, there will be no music classes on the uh, 11th and the 25th. So just note that if you're part of our music program. Um, but Thursday nights at 7, we have kids music. And then at 7.30, we invite adults and youth to come and join for choir. Uh, we've also got next weekend is our busy second weekend of the month. So on the Saturday, it's Naomi and Ruth. So if you're coming to join us, I know they're doing a fun art, arts and crafts project. Uh, so please sign up for that ASAP so they can have enough uh, supplies for all of that. Um, and then they're going to be, we're going to have our potluck next Sunday. So we're doing small plates. We know you guys are probably done cooking for a little while. So we're encouraging you to bring your favorite appetizer or small plate. And listen, if you just want to bring whatever you want, you can bring whatever you want. And if you don't bring anything, you can still come because there's always plenty of food. Um, so we encourage you to come out for that. The, the 17th, we've got our free timers lunch. Uh, we are still looking for teenagers and a few young, um, young adults or adults, preferably with some skill sets in construction. Uh, for our Appalachia service project um, and Miss Gale is good on adults for Camp Hope but now we're looking for maybe one more or two more teenagers to go to Camp Hope so if you have friends or if you have uh, young people in your family that want to have this opportunity I'll just put this in there so my youngest is a junior in high school and just applied for the National Honor Society amongst his group of friends who also had similar grades and similar activities at school some of his friends did not get admitted to the National Honor Society, and he did because of all of his experience working in a church. Now, number one, he is a pastor's kid, so like, there's a ton of things that go into that. But specifically, these opportunities are great things for kids to have on their resume for college admittance. 
But I will tell you this, anyone who has gone on one of these will tell you it truly is a formative experience into your adulthood and into your work experiences as, as an adult. So um, please just pass that information on. We are still looking for a few people. Uh, Vacation Bible School, we're going to be getting ready to uh, begin the decorating process. We're going to have a couple of days where you can come in and make some things for our decorations. So be on the lookout for that. And then our April love offering, we've got our wall of hope. It's a little different this year. We've got the wall of ASP slash hope. Um, so we're doing these two mission trips this summer and that wall of hope will be contributors to our to our love offering this month. We also have our, our annual flower sale coming up, our plant sale, so we encourage you uh, to check out the insert. You can fill this out and write a check, or there's a QR code there goes to the online uh, ordering form, so you can do either way. Um, and so lots of things going on. We're really excited about this summer. So uh, with that, I'm gonna invite the kids up for family time. I hear that there is a big celestial event happening this week. Have you guys heard anything about it? What's happening in the sky this week? An eclipse. An eclipse. Oh, yeah. Come on, Adrian. Um, so you guys are going to have to help me. You all know science and math were never my strong suits in school, okay? And uh, science has continued to change this on me. So how many planets are in our solar system? Eight. Eight? Does, does that include Pluto? Pluto's no longer, see, I heard recently that they're like having misgivings about this, that maybe Pluto is a planet. So is there eight or nine? I don't know. At any rate, we're having a celestial event this week um, just in, on, uh, with our moon and our sun, right? So that's a pretty significant event. It's going to be huge. Uh, Miss Vicki, our uh, administrative assistant in the office, and her family have gone to Ohio for this event. So I'm really excited they got to go do that. We'll get to see a little bit of it, but they're going to get to see the full eclipse. So what I'm going to do, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so there's eight planets, right, in our solar system, okay? Now, that doesn't even represent the sun because all I could find were these silly... I tried to find pom-poms. I couldn't find pom-poms this morning, so I've got marbles. Um, but I think I might have enough. I might not. So when we talk about God creator, and we think about you know, what we learn about in Sunday school with Noah's Ark and the creation of the animals and um, how God created this space and created us, we talk about that a lot, like God created you, God created me. We all look a little different, but yet God created us in God's image. So those are things we talk about in church a lot, about the here and the now. But the thing is, is when we talk about God in Scripture, we talk about God of the universe. So what does this represent if it's only eight planets? That is just a solar system, right? And are we part of a larger entity that beyond our solar system? What is that called? The Milky Way, which is a galaxy, right? So I'm going to take a whole bunch of these little things. We don't really know everything that's in our galaxy just yet, do we? We don't, we don't know what's in. Do we think, so I could, I mean, I really, it could be a tripping hazard, and we've got communion this morning, so I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, but, like, we could have, now let's say these are not planets anymore, that these are actually solar systems, which is what we are within the Milky Way, right? And so now you have this huge galaxy, and if you've ever seen it on a, uh, you know, pictures of it or on a, micro, uh, a telescope, the galaxy is vast. There are so many solar systems within our galaxy that we haven't even been able to explore or see or visit or any of those things, right? We're still trying to get to Mars, which is part of our solar system. So if this represents our galaxy, the Milky Way, are we the only galaxy in the universe? How many do you think there are? A lot, right? And so when we are learning about God and when we are learning about our creation and our world here, we understand God is a creator of the universe. And that's a lot more than any one of us can compartmentalize in our tiny little human brains, right? And so when people ask me, well, what about God? How, how do you explain God? I can't, because the vastness of this is beyond even our scientific understanding just yet. Maybe someday we'll know more about the universe and all of the other galaxies that make up our universe, 
But when we understand God, and when we understand these celestial events that you guys are going to see this week, I want you to understand that even though we are each uniquely made and created by God and loved by God, we are part of something so much bigger than just ourselves. And that's what I wanted to kind of like, in my big, I would have thrown pom-poms all around the sanctuary, but again, tripping hazard. Um, but this, this, this whole space here, if you begin to think of it, we are just one small piece of an amazing, wonderful universe that God's created. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys this morning, especially as we get ready to watch this eclipse, because it does really put you in a space where you're like, wow, I'm really little in comparison to this whole big universe that we're part of. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the ways in which you continue to show how important we are. Even in the midst of the smallness that we take up in your universe, we know how incredibly special each one of us has been created to leave our mark and to leave our, uh, our, our footprint, our fingerprint on the world that you've created here. So Lord, as we go from this place, I ask that each one of these young people be imprinted on their hearts the love that you have for them. And all these things we pray in your holy name. Amen. All right, will you guys help me pick these up? <laughs> Thank you. We have reached the time in our service when we are asked to return to the Lord a portion of the blessings that he has given us in order to assist with his message and his love in the world. Let us pray. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
You may be seated and please join me in the unison prayer. Creator God, maker and sustainer of all life, dew bringer, you draw water from the highest limestone crest to fill the deepest mountain springs of Mount Hermon. You have made these highest waters flow down deep, yet rise again as they pour cascading into waterfall after waterfall. Such glory. Forgive us, Lord, as we gather around your mountain-fed waters to drink all you have given. We have not been one people. We have jostled and shoved. We have taken too much. We have made suffering where you have offered life overspilling. This is not your way. Listen to our prayers, the prayers of the people of your creation, as we raise our hopes in you. Mountaintop, almighty God, you do not just offer the blessing of everlasting life, you command it. We kneel at the foot of the waterfall. We are in the midst of your oasis. We drink at the pool of the Hermon stream, breathing in your spirit mist. We share this life with our neighbors and your whole creation of animals, birds, and fish. One world, one word one community, one everlasting life. To you we raise the prayer taught to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. 
See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's Gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, for the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable to you. Amen. Uh, this passage is um, significant to me. It was the first passage I ever preached from, or ever preached any sermon, in fact. Uh, because typically on the Sunday after Easter is when the pastor takes off, and they let me take the pulpit. That was before I even started a seminary. So, um, but I love this story of Thomas. I love this story because it's such a powerful story for especially young people, which was where I was working at that period of time. I was strictly a youth director. I was teaching young people, and that's what drew me into the seminary uh, and drew me into wanting to know more and following this call, call to ordained ministry. Because young people, they doubt. And we have to be able to talk to them about solar systems and galaxies and universes. And the fact that even though we think we're the center of it, we're not. And um, so as we're looking at this passage in John, I want you guys to be transported to that moment of uncertainty. That moment where the disciples found themselves in that room after Jesus' crucifixion. They're locked behind doors, and they're grappling with their own doubt and their confusion. Because they didn't have it all laid out for them either. And they were young people, again. A few of them might have been in their 30s along with Jesus, but a lot of them were like 17, 18. And amidst their turmoil, Jesus appeared among them offering peace and reassurance. So let's delve a little deeper into that story of these disciples locked in this room, grappling with that fear and uncertainty of the aftermath of the crucifixion. Picture it, a group of individuals who had journeyed with Jesus, witnessed his miracles, and embraced his teachings, now huddled together behind closed doors. Their hearts are heavy with grief and confusion. Their world had been turned upside down. Their beloved teacher and friend had been brutally taken from them, leaving them feeling lost and vulnerable. Fearing their own persecution and uncertain of what the future held for them, they sought refuge in the familiarity of that room, seeking solace in each other's company. But despite their attempts to find comfort in isolation, their doubts and their fears still lingered. They wondered what would become of them without Jesus by their side. Would they be even able to carry on his mission? Could they ever truly find peace again? And then in a moment that must have felt like divine intervention, Jesus appeared amongst them. Despite the locked doors, he stood in their midst. His presence was radiating, warmth, and full of reassurance. Could you even imagine the disbelief and wonder that must have washed over them? Here was their beloved teacher, their Messiah, standing before them once more. But even in the midst of this miraculous encounter, one among them, Thomas, still harbored doubts. He couldn't bring himself to believe the incredible news without seeing and touching the wounds of Jesus for himself. 
His skepticism serves as a poignant reminder of the struggles we all face in our faith journey. How often do we find ourselves questioning, seeking tangible evidence of God's presence in our lives? Yet Jesus, in his infinite compassion and understanding, didn't chastise Thomas for his doubts. Instead, he offered Thomas exactly what he needed the opportunity to see and to touch. His wounded hands and his side. And in that moment, Thomas's doubts melted away, replaced by profound faith and convic conviction. My Lord and my God, he exclaimed, acknowledging the truth of Jesus' resurrection. This story serves as a powerful testament to the transformative power of encountering the risen Christ. Even in the midst of, in the moments of doubt and uncertainty, just as Jesus brought peace and reassurance to the disciples in that room, he continues to offer peace and reassurance to us today. Jesus' presence is a beacon of hope in our darkest hours, a reminder that we are never truly alone. So this week, as we anticipate this celestial spectacle of an eclipse, we are reminded of an awe-inspiring beauty and wonder of the natural world. The sun, the moon, and the earth align in a delicate dance, casting shadows and illuminating the skies in a breathtaking display of cosmic harmony. As we witness this event, let us pause to marvel at the intricate tapestry of creation and recognize our place within it. Just as the sun and the moon align in perfect symmetry, may we strive to align our lives with God's divine order, embracing our role as servants of this creation. As a community, we are called to meet people where they are, extending compassion, empathy, and understanding to all who cross our paths. Just as Jesus appeared amongst the disciples in their time of need, may we embody the spirit of love and reconciliation in our interactions with each other, offering that same empathy and compassion and understanding. Whether we're comforting the grieving, whether we're advocating for justice, or we're just offering a listening ear to the marginalized, let us walk alongside our neighbors with humility and grace, shining the light of Christ into the darkest corners of our world, understanding that no, we are not the center of our world. So the next three weeks we are inviting you into this question of how shall we live. In doing so, we are challenged to examine our way of life in relationship to God's invitation to live as part of creation. Our journey is not an isolation one, but of interconnectedness and interdependence with all of God's creation. As we seek to align our lives more fully with God's divine plan, may we cultivate a deep reverence for the sacred web of life that surrounds and sustains us all. Let us embrace this message of John, finding solace in the presence of the risen Christ, finding reassurance amidst our doubts and our fears, as we witness the eclipse and marvel at the wonder of creation, may we be reminded of our call to stewardship and care for our world. And as we navigate the complexities of community life, may we all realize we are in this together. Will you pray with me? Lord God, as we draw close together around this communion table, we call upon you to hear our prayers. Hear our confessions of falling short in a world where you have called us to steward. Lord, we give thanks for this table. We give thanks for this meal. 
and we give thanks for the fellowship that surrounds us all. Amen. As we gather around this table, we are reminded that all are welcome to receive communion in the United Methodist Church. You need not be a member of this church nor a member of any church to receive communion and to come forward as one of Jesus' disciples. Will you pray with me? We give our hearts up to you, Lord. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we have turned away and our love has failed you, your love has remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and set before us the way of life. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts through Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the sharing of this cup, we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and until he comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. It is through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in unity with the whole world, that all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite my servers to come forward.
pray with me. Lord God, for this gift, this grace that we have received, let it be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that as we leave this place, we may be a light for this world. In the midst of darkness, may we bring your Son's love into this world. Amen. I invite you to stand for a word of blessing and remain standing for our closing hymn. Go in peace that even in the midst of darkness, we may be a light for this world. Just go. Be a light. Amen. Thank you.